that's how everything is. I wish I had a magic pill or a magic button for all of us to feel better right now, but all I can say and all I know is that it was small, subtle, little things one at a time that added up to a really, really happy life. And it's, well, I'll get to that in a minute, because I want to say it's been a long time since I felt sad, but I, like the past few weeks, it was like, maybe I needed to remember what it was like to feel so bad before I can even talk to you people, because I started experiencing some funky stuff again, and had to use the tools I teach my clients, and use the tools that worked for me so long ago to get myself out again. So, I'll get to that. So, but all I feel like I know to do, other than say that there is hope, God didn't forget you, the universe has your back, like, continue to go for it, like, it's never over, there's always still hope, is to one by one go through the tools that got me where I am. Okay. Number one, I had to learn to give myself permission to be upset. Denying your feelings does not get you anywhere. You have to be real, really real about your experience. So if you feel bad, you feel bad. Number one is let yourself feel that way. When we're denying it and fighting it, and what's wrong with me, I shouldn't feel this way, it sticks around a lot longer. What resists persists. We have to let it slip through us. We have to let it be okay to not feel perfect all the time. Okay, so the next thing that really changed things for me was gratitude. And I know everyone hears about gratitude all the time. You're like, yeah, I know, I'm supposed to make a gratitude list. It was on Oprah. <laughs> but, like, everyone knows. But I remember not feeling like I had anything to be grateful for. Like, that's how you feel when you're depressed. I remember, like, laying in bed being like, okay, there's a roof. There's a roof. I am happy there's a roof. I feel thankful for, I, what does it feel like to feel thankful for the roof? okay, that feels good. Like, I, I can feel some gratitude in my body. Like, I remember just, like, working with whatever I had. This cup of coffee's hot. I'm, I'm really glad this is hot. I can feel grateful for this cup of coffee right now. I mean, I started small. I started with whatever I could think of that day. And today, when I make my gratitude list, they're super long, and next to them, I write how each thing I'm grateful for makes me feel, and then I feel the feelings of that thing. So if my car makes me feel successful, I take the time to feel successful for a minute. I try my best to cultivate the happy feelings in my life at every chance I get. Positive momentum. When I have a split second of feeling better, when I feel, I mean, then and now, the past two weeks, I'm not feeling funky again. When I have a second of feeling better, I go with the positive momentum. If it's sunny outside and I feel good about the sun for half a second, I go outside. You know what I mean? I let whatever feels good to me propel me forward into the next thing. So if feeling like I had a couple things in my life that were going right propelled me to making the list, propelled me to going to New York, propelled me from going to Barnes & Noble, propelled me to calling Katie, propelled us to sitting in that lecture, propelled me to believing that God still had my back. Like, I let the positive momentum of whatever is going right move me forward. And looking back, that's what I did when I was so sad. I just didn't know, I wouldn't have known how to put it into words. Um, Stop effing judging yourself, number four. Stop judging yourself. I have this comparison thing going on all the time. My Tulsa friends are still so happy. They're dressing so cute and posting their pictures on Facebook, and they look like their life is so great. What is wrong with me? It's to this low place all the time because it's this belief that you're better than me, and I'm less than you, or I'm better than her, and she's less than me, and it never brings any feelings of happiness. Like, I had to work hard to believe that wherever I was was good enough let myself be where I was at and not judge myself for feeling bad, not judge myself for not being where I used to be. I had to let myself be there. I call this my miracle prayer because I believe this prayer has been a catalyst for me getting to happy places many, 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 many times. My prayer is, God, please help me to see this differently. I need a shift in perception. Please help me to find a better way. There has to be a better way. On the way here, I was freaking out that I wouldn't know what the F to say to y'all. And I was like, <laughs> God, ah. And, I, and I, was, I was like, Amanda, you have tools to get yourself out of a freaking out state. Like, this is what you do for a living. You teach people this. And I'm like, I know, but what am I going to say to the people? <laughs> and I prayed my little prayer, and within 10 seconds, I just heard, like, deep down here in my heart, just talk to the people. Just talk, like, talk to the people. And it's not so much the words that crossed through my mind. It was this feeling of just give what you have to give. That's all anyone in the world wants from you is your truth for you to give of your best and higher self. So that little miracle prayer has saved me a million times. So, um, yeah, I'll go 
Linda woke up going on the past two weeks. So the past couple weeks, I just found myself waking up funky. And it was weird because when I was first invited to do this, I was like, this is great because I used to wake up so sad and I wake up so happy now. Like, I can go talk to the people. Yeah. And then the past two weeks, it's like, why am I waking up sad? What am I going to say to them? What's going on? Can I see clients today? It's like, what is that? Ah. And so I had to, like, use my stuff. You know what I mean? And I found myself, you know, going with my positive momentum, going with what felt that good that day, and going back to my age-old tactic of journaling. And my journaling looks something like, I'm pissed off, I don't know what's going on, everything sucks, blah, 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 blah. God, please help me to see this differently. Angels, universe, God, whatever's out there, please help me. And I, I find that every time I start to write and start to flow, I come up with a better, positive place, more of an answer by the time I get to the end of my little writing session. And that really pulled me out of funky places a couple times this week, last week, whenever I started writing. The other thing I did was I really developed the belief that like things get stuck in your body. Like I felt like people used to say this and I'd be like, I don't know what that woo woo person's talking about, <laughs> but <laughs> negative stuff can get stuck in my body. Like I'll have anxiety or fear or something crazy in me. And it's like, I can't get it out till I move, till I get on the yoga mat and breathe deeply or until I get on my bicycle or go for a walk or whatever, I found I have to move my body. My background in therapy tells me this is serotonin and dopamine and endorphins and you know, the things that antidepressants help us with. P.S. I think there's nothing wrong with someone who has a season of using antidepressant like to get over whatever they're going through. It's a tool that sometimes helps people. But exercise is one of those ways to have some of those feelings show up in our brain. You know what I mean? And then the new agey people are saying it's stuck in our body and we're getting it out. I don't care which one it is. All I know, or if it's both, all I know is that it helps me. So when I was feeling a hot mess, I was like morning practice journaling, evening practice yoga. And between those two things, I could lift myself out of my, what am I going to say to the people? I'm building funky place every single day. Um, yeah, so that's a couple of my things. And there's so much, but a thing I really feel like that I use a whole lot right now is when I'm feeling any way I don't want to feel. Feeling fearful, feeling sad, feeling uncomfortable, feeling stuck, feeling bitter. I acknowledge how it is I feel. I let myself feel that way. I think about how I, I want to feel and I think what those feelings would be and what that would feel like. I take the time to feel them on my body for a little while. So, I don't know, I keep using the example of coming here, which is weird, but whatever. I was scared I wouldn't know what to say, so that's fearful. Well, how do I want to feel? I want to feel confident and I want to feel free and I want to feel gifted and I want to feel like there's an abundance of things that flow out of me. That's how I want to feel. So at that point, I would make a mantra of how I'd want to feel. That like when I was starting a business and I was scared to death that no one was going to pay me and I couldn't support myself as a life coach, which is what I do every day of my life now. When I was scared to death, my mantra was, your work is of high service and worthy of compensation. And I said it over and over and over and over again. I said it, I had little reminders on my phone that popped up based on location. So I pull into Starbucks, it says your work is of high service and worthy of compensation. I get to my house, it tells me it again. And I say my mantra over and over and over till I believed that thing. I believed that people were gonna pay me and I believed I had a gift to give and it is my reality today. And so like a mantra for this situation could have been something like, I don't know, you have a gift to give people are showing up to receive it and it will go well and like amen just something that feels free and confident and beautifully and when I have clients that are like the man's never coming the job's never coming we get develop mantras around the things that they want to believe they can have that they don't yet believe they can have and so that's my little mantra making is a tool I use 